Okay, folks, um, this is a little tutorial on how to use the functional analysis tool, uh, which is a Excel-based tool to do functional analysis, mainly functional flows. So this is an Excel, uh, macro-enabled workbook, so when you start it for the first time, you may have the little security banner up here. You need to enable the macro so it'll work. Um, so the tool has three uh, tabs. This is sort of the configuration tab. This is the database tab where the lion's share of the work is going to be. And this is the output, which is uh, a, a markup language called DOT, which is used to draw graphs. So this tool takes uh, sort of this hierarchical outline view of your tasks and predecessors and produces um, a graph, which I'll show you in a second. So what you're going to do is you're going to open up the tool, enable macros, and you go in here to the, to the uh, database and then import all of your tasks. So these are the important columns. There's the task ID and the description. So site exploitation is sort of the overall task. It's uh, zero. And then there's three tasks at the same level, one, two, and three. So task one is collect. Task two is store. Task three is produce soft C. And you can see they all have task zero as sort of the parent. And the predecessor for task number two is task one. The predecessor for task three is task two. Um, then we start breaking down into subtasks. So um, task one has several subtasks, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4. You see that 1.2 has a predecessor of 1.1. 1.3 is also that. And 1.4 has a predecessor of 1.2. Um, subtask 2.1 has four predecessors. And these are each separated by a comma uh, without a space. So 2.1, before that one starts, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, and 1 1.4 all need to start, and etc. So you kind of got to go through there and put all your tasks in, the predecessors and the parents and the descriptions. You go into the graph tool. You can configure it however you want it. The big thing that you're going to want to configure is which level to render. So zero is the top level, so I'll put that in first. And I'll say create functional flow. It updated the markup page, and it automatically copied everything to the clipboard. So then I'm going to go to this website right here and log in. So I'll give you guys the login for that. And when you bring in the, uh, click the login, you're going to type in the credentials, and it's going to go to a uh, site. Once you're on the site, you hit new graph, you're going to paste in the output from the tool, hit send, and then there's the top level uh, graph. So if I want to go back in at, again and say maybe I want to get the second level, so the get the sub level, I can hit um, create functional flow, give me a much larger graph, hit OK, make another graph here, paste, send. Now I have a much uh, larger graph. You can hit view, brings up a viewer, and here you can um, you know zoom in, sort of pan around. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you want to add new um, stuff, you can. So let's say we're going to break into 2.2. Um, so 2.2 is apparent. I'm going to have 2.1, and 2.2.4, say. These all three have the same parent. And we'll just say that um, this first one is uh, show gallery and then they're going to select a photo uh, show photo of zoomed or something like that and then maybe exit so this one is going to be 2.2.1 2.2.2 and this is going to be either 2.2.3 or 2.2.1 maybe they're going to cancel after that Go back here, drop my level to two. Got that. Go into here, paste, and hit send, and now I've got all of 2.2. So it's going to be hard, I think, to have multiple clusters. You know, it it's really just one level and its parent. So like, it'd be nice to kind of have like multiple clusters within clusters, but I think it just gets to be 
you know, a really complicated graph. So what I recommend is kind of break it into pieces and render it in sort of logical sections. And then you can put that sections in your documentation and have a, have a really nice, um, really nice graph. All right, good luck.